Dorsey, a long fly ball to the gap in right center. Austin Jackson with a quick close and a whale of a catch. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there and welcome to Sportsnet Central presented by Comcast Business. I'm Rose McBride alongside Evan Walter. Today's sunny day was Today's sunny day was full of Chicago baseball. What a beautiful day it was, with both teams sitting atop their respected leagues. The White Sox and the Cubs look to keep rolling on their current hot streaks. Sportsnet Central, presented by Comcast Business. We start on the north side. It was Jake area today at the friendly confines as the Cubs look to keep on being one of the league's most dominant teams as they wrapped up their four-game set against the Nationals. Cubs looking for their seventh straight win after sweeping the Pirates and winning the first three against the Nats. Oh, both teams celebrating Mother's Day at Wrigley this afternoon, sporting special pink uniforms for breast cancer awareness. Arietta going for win number seven versus the Nationals. But the visitors were not making it easy for the Cubs' ace. Top of the third, Bryce Harper on first. Brian Zimmerman rips one to third. It goes off Chris Bryant's glove and into the bullpen. They sent Harper home, he beats the tag, and the Nats lead one to nothing. Very next inning, it would get worse. The pitcher Tanner Rourke hits a soft ground ball, but Arietta can't handle it, and the bases are loaded with nobody down. Then Anthony Rendon brings them in. He hits a grounder to second, but it'll get the job done. Arietta limiting the damage just one in the inning, but the Cubs keep trailing 2 0 early. Bottom half, the Cubs offense gets on the board with some help from the Nationals. Ben Zobris scores on a wild pitch from Rourke. The Cubs now down only one but the Nats kept coming. The fifth, Daniel Murphy starts the inning off with a double off the wall in left center. The Nats with another man in scoring position with no outs, really making Arietta work. And a batter later, Wilson Ramos brings him in. He rips a single into left to score Murphy. Nationals extend their lead. It's now three to one. Two outs, Jake would get Rourke to ground out to end the innings, but that would be it for Arietta. He exits after five innings of work, his shortest outing of the year. The Cubs trailing by two. But in the seventh, Bryant picks up his ace. Bryant sends one right up the middle for a base hit. That scores Dexter Fowler and Trevor Cahill. Bryant saves Arietta the loss, and we are now tied at three. And this game was headed to extras. In the tenth, the Nationals have the bases loaded with two outs, but Adam Warren gets Zimmerman to fly out and end the threat. Still tied at three. In the eleventh, Jason Hayward on first, Chris Bryant at the dish. He barrels one into the right center gap. Hayward is going hard around bases, and they're sending him home. But Danny Espinosa nails him from second base. The Cubs can't capitalize on the big base hit. More free baseball. In the 12th, two men on. Joe Mann decides to walk Bryce Harper. That's his sixth walk of the game, tying an MLB record. So the Nats have him loaded up again. Justin Grimm facing Ryan Zimmerman. He induces a soft grounder to third, and Javi Baez makes a great play. He nabs him at first. Baez saves a run and gets the Cubs out of the jam. In the 13th, Baez is up to a bat and a chance to end it. Deep left center! Game over! Cubs win! Cubs win! final. Baez ends the near five-hour affair. Cubs improved to 24 and 6 on the year. They walk off the Nationals in 13 innings and win 4 to 3. Now it's time for Built for Business presented by Comcast Business. Let's take a look at Arietta's first six starts versus Sundays. He had a 0.84 ERA coming into the game, but the Nationals got to him for three runs, five hits, and only five innings of work. His strikeout to walk ratio was nearly three to one in his first six outings, but was down to only two to one in Sunday's no decision outing. This has been Comcast Business, built for business. After the game, Jake Arietta talked about his shaky start on Mother's Day. That's, it's been incredible. Um, we guys pick each other up when the moment calls for it uh, today. 
Our bullpen was incredible. K.O. came in and gave us three really good innings. And his base hit led to that uh, the two runs that tied the game. Uh, and the guys that came in after him warned it extremely well, Grimm uh, and obviously Travis. So it was, uh, it was a team win. We, we grinded it out. Tanner pitched pitch really well today. Uh, they've got some good arms that come out of the pen, so they made it tough on us for a while. But, you know, uh, bullpen was able to get it to a point where Javi was able to, you know, do what he did uh, at the end there and, you know, walk it off for us. So uh, an incredible series and a pretty special way to end it um, the way Javi did today. Stick around later in our show. Our Layla Rahimi has the press pass from Wrigley Field following the Mother's Day walk-off win versus the Nationals. Over, over on the south side, the best team in the American League hope to pull even further away in the standings on this Sunday matinee. Coming off a big win by Chris Sale yesterday, Jose Quintana looked to lead the Sox to a three-game sweep of Minnesota before heading on a week-long road trip to Texas and New York. Plenty of fans out at the ballpark this uh, Mother's Day at 35th and Shields. Jose Quintana on the bump, and he performed some intricate handshake routines prior to taking the mound. Game tied at one in the fifth after the team traded RBI ground outs. Two outs, man at second for Austin Jackson. He ropes one into right center, which scores Avi Garcia. Sox take their lead for the take their first lead on the day for Jackson's double. And Quintana makes that go-ahead run stand up. The lefty gets in a groove after allowing an early run, setting down straight 10 straight twins at one inning. Seven, Garcia's been hitting better since his return from the DL. Two hits today. Blah. <laughs> Garcia's been hitting better since his return from the DL. Two hits today. This isn't one of them, but things are going his way. Reaches third on the dropped third strike, or reaches first on the dropped third strike. And the Sox immediately make it hurt. Deanna Navarro rips a shot into the right field gap. That goes all the way to the wall, and Garcia scores standing up. Sox up a pair. Same score in the ninth, and Jackson is heard from again. First pitch hunting, R.C. a long fly ball to the gap in right center, Austin Jackson with a quick close and a whale of a catch. Oswaldo Arcia and David Robertson both appreciative of the great catch by Jackson. Sacks win 3-1. They sweep the Twins and move on to 22-10 on the season. Here's a reaction from the locker room. Yeah, I try, you know, uh, I get the series or all three games and try to be close. I think I uh, start a little bit slow and miss a lot of pitch, but try to get the outs, you know, and, and we work good after that, feel better when we come on and, you know, take a seven innings, it's good. We feel really good and try, you know, like keep hot, keep hot and yeah, play baseball day by day and, you know, we, we're good. Everybody healthy and everybody wants to make the job. Not to be outdone by Chris Sale's 7-0 start record, Jose Quintana has five wins under his belt with an ERA of 1.38, giving him the third lowest in the MLB. The dynamic duo is responsible for 12 of the Sox 22 wins this season and provide the Sox with the star power that they need on the mound. Now we'll go across the studio to Chuck Garfine and Bill Melton with more from Post Game Live. All right, well, last season, the White Sox could not could not beat the Twins. The Twins outscored them, what was it, 108 to 57. Sox were 6 and 13 against Minnesota, but now in the first six games this year, White Sox were 6 and 0. What a turnaround so quickly, too. Yeah, it's a big turnaround. I think uh, the injuries to the Twins are really more to their everyday players. A lot of that's going on. Uh, they don't really have a, a starting staff, the five man rotation. They're having the problems again with injuries and stuff. Got a lot of young guys they're plugging in and stuff, but still, you know, when the White Sox take the field, they're out there to beat who's ever in front of them. So you can't discount the fact that they did sweep the Twins. The Twins are menaces. They bother us to death. 
But guess what? Torrey Hunter's not there. Yeah. We had the edge. All right, so the Sox defense, you know, you think, well, they're going to have a bad game today. No, they haven't had an error. They haven't made an error since last Saturday, a week ago Saturday. And Austin Jackson, I mean, he, he ran from Waukegan and he caught that thing. Yeah, he's covering the whole parking lot, no question about it. He's probably out there getting everything he can get his hands on. But we talk about errors. There's a lot of waste errors. There's a lot of mental errors. Mental errors means you're not covering the gaps. You're positioning yourself wrong. That's where the White Sox have really improved. And also by putting Adam Eaton in right field, it's a different jump in center field because the ball's coming right at you. But in right field, you pick it up quicker off the bat. Adam's got the speed. Generally, they don't like to put a guy with a, a bad arm in right. Well, he's got a great arm. So that's a perfect position for him right there. And I think the communication between all the outfielders, uh, you know, as long as they're talking, hey, I'm going to play over here. This guy hits the ball here most of the time. And that's what they do. And you got Daryl Boston also helps them read what the team did, where balls are landing. So they're actually communicating and working it well. The White Sox, a season high, 12 games over 500. For Bill, I'm Chuck. Back over to you. Thanks guys. Coming up next, we'll bring you more on the White Sox from U.S. Cellular and what Avi Garcia is doing right to continue his nine game hit streak. Plus, we'll go back to Wrigley for more post game reaction after the Cubs finally won in this marathon game. The White Sox finish what they started, winning the final game of their series against Minnesota 3-1. Jose Quintana tallied his fifth win of the season af this afternoon, pitching seven innings. Nate Jones and David Robertson came out of the bullpen to finish it up to give the Sox a five-game lead in the AL Central. With more, here's Sierra Santos with your post-game press pass inside the locker room. First pitch hunting. R.C. a long fly ball to the gap in right center. Austin Jackson with a quick close and a whale of a catch. I didn't think he was really going to get to the last one. I didn't think he was going to catch it. Nobody did. Another game, another highlight reel grab from the outfield. Austin Jackson flashed the leather all weekend, put the Sox ahead with a double in the fifth, and capped it all off by robbing Oswaldo Arcia in the ninth inning. Oh, man, that was... Uh, it was a long run, but like I said, uh, communication with, with, with Adam there at the end was uh, was perfect. You know, he's letting me know where the ball is at, and uh, you know, he just go go all out for it. His defense is fantastic, and uh, you know, the play in the first inning, the play there in, in the last inning, it's it just solidifies everything in the outfield. I think he can cover a lot of ground. Adam can cover a lot of ground, so it's it's important for us to play defense. But the you know, just the dynamic, all three of those guys out there is has been great for us. Outstanding, you know. Just it's good when when your team is can help you in couple couple plays in couple of different situations and you know try to come back and try to make uh, the best speech after that. Avisail Garcia hasn't skipped a beat since returning from a four-game absence due to a hamstring issue. Garcia has embraced his DH role and it's shown during his nine-game hitting streak. It's great because that's what we're here for. You know, everybody put a little bit and trying to. You know, put uh, some guys on base for you know for the big guys and trying to score score for the pitches so they, they they can work more easily and you know that's that's what we're here for. That's why we came to spin training to prepare ourselves for for a win. Coming off their third sweep of the season, the White Sox head to Arlington to play a Rangers team they swept just two weeks ago in Chicago. The Sox six game seven day road trip begins with Miguel Gonzalez on the mound who gets another chance to audition for the fifth spot in the rotation. Reporting with the White Sox at U.S. Cellular Field, Sierra Santos, Comcast Sportsnet. Now let's take a look around the AL Central. Rangers trying to break out the brooms in Detroit. The top of the eighth, Bobby Wilson at the dish with the bases loaded. The veteran catcher was reacquired by Texas on Tuesday and he breaks the game open with a grand slam. His first homer of the year and Rangers are up 2-6-2. Next batter is Delino DeShields. He gives the visitors some insurance with a solo jack that hits the top of the wall and gets just over. Rangers come up beating the Tigers 8-3. Rubber match in Cleveland, Royals and Indians. Bottom five, Indians trying to tie things up and they do. Michael Brantley serves a 2-2 pitch to left. 
Francisco Lindor comes around to score. It's 3-3. Two batters later, Lonnie Chisenhall gives the Tribe the lead with a single to right. Michael Brantley comes around from second, and Cleveland goes up 4-2-3. Indians take the game and the series 5-4, your final. Now let's take a look at the AL Central standings. With the win, the White Sox stay five games ahead of the second place Indians, who beat the Royals today. The defending champs drop six back, and Detroit sits in fourth place seven games off the pace. Now to Wrigley. Mother's Day at the ballpark, Jake Arrieta looking, to win, looking for win number seven versus the Nationals. But the Cubs were down three to one in the seventh. That's when Chris Bryant sends a base hit up the middle. That scores two. Bryant picks up his ace and saves him the loss. We're all tied at three. And this one headed to extras. In the 13th, Javi Baez at the dish, and he ends it. Baez launches a solo home run to left, and the Cubs walk off to end their near five-hour affair. Cubs improved to 24 and six on the year. They win four, two, three. The one thing that sums it up, and I mean this, and again, I, I have the privilege of being in our dugout. Our guys were in that game to the last drop. Long game like that. We've been playing well. Um, you could just you could just mail it in, but our guys are into into that game to the very last drop. I promise you, uh, uh, David. I, I'm I'm going to kill Rossi. It's my fault. He had a play, and he's going to play again tomorrow. I mean, uh, uh, he was fantastic. The whole group. But I'm just saying, to the last moment, everybody was there to win that game, and that's a beautiful thing. Now let's look at the way the NL Central shakes up. With the win today, the Cubs stay seven and a half games up on the second place Pirates, who beat the Cardinals today. The Cards fall to nine games back. The fourth place Reds are 11 and a half games off the pace. Don't forget to tune in to tomorrow at seven as the Cubs look to make it eight straight as they start their three game set against the Padres and stick around after the game and catch Chicago Cubs post game live with Cap and Holly presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Still ahead, we'll hear from Avi Garcia about the Sox winning mentality and what they need to do to keep the ball rolling this season. And we take a look at the off-season investments Rick Hahn acquired and show how they're paying off big time for the Sox.